welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for January 9th, 2022. Do so I have a motion to go into a uh, closed session? Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, jurisdiction any other personnel matters that affect one or more specific individuals, and to conduct collective bargaining negotiations or consider matters that relate to the negotiations. I have, a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those there say aye. 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 We'll return at five o'clock for our regular work session. Thank you. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work sessions for January 19th, 2022. We stand for pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody had a chance to uh, look at the agenda? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Um, approval of minutes for January the 5th closed session. Everybody had a chance to review them? Yes. Yes. Mr. Um, Smith, may I make a motion to approve the minutes uh, open and closed for January 5th, 2022? Second. A motion and second to approve both the close and open sessions for January 5th, 2022. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, we in front of us now have uh, January 12th, closed session and budget work session minutes in front of you. Is everybody a chance to look at those? Yes. Mr. Smith, may I please make a motion to accept the closed session and budget work session minutes for January 12th of 2022? Second. Uh, motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Dr. Salins, we have uh, our COVID-19 update. Yes, I just wanted to let the board know that we still have not um, received the state reports that we were getting from the governor's office through Dr. Ciotola's office um, because of the hack to the system. While I know that there's data out there, um, that official report has not um, come that it was on a daily basis and that's why you haven't been getting that on a daily basis. Um, although uh, we are following closely the attendance of students and staff every single day, um, that report goes to Dr. Ciotola every evening and um, we discuss that. So um, we are definitely taking a keen eye looking from school to school um, to ensure that we make sure that you know um, we're monitoring the staffing numbers making sure that we're being able to cover safely the classrooms um, and so you know that's really the report that I don't really necessarily have a report to <laughs> provide for you um, as soon as the um, health department generates that same report um, through the governor's office to Dr. Ciotola I'm certain that he will start forwarding that to me again um, but in the absence of that we are just basically talking on a daily basis and monitoring um, our county data as it relates to attendance for staff and students but we do our own attendance for staff and students correct and Dr. Of course, you're in, in touch with Dr. C, C all the time. We don't. Do we see and test anything that's getting close to, what, in your opinion, of what the numbers we're seeing in our schools or some, whatever? No. Um, thankfully, um, while the cutoff is typically 10 percent, so if you get to an absenteeism rate at 10 percent, and that's mostly looking at students. Um, that's when the health department would contact us to say. Um, basically, hey, we see that uh, specific schools at 10%, um, let's talk through why they're at 10%, because sometimes there is a particular reason, or sometimes there is actually like an outbreak of strep throat, or it could be a variety of things. And so they kind of evaluate it. Sometimes they'll just monitor it. It could be one classroom that they, that they would recommend to, to close down. Um, so 10% is usually the threshold. Obviously with COVID, that threshold is a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but again, we always look at what's behind the data to determine just because a student is absent doesn't necessarily mean that it's COVID related. So we need to make sure that we, you know, take, a, you know, attention to the detail behind the data so that we're making good decisions as it relates to a closure for quote unquote COVID. I mean, I know that the, the uh, teachers and principals were gearing up 
for our students to be able to take Chromebooks home and stuff. And of course, when they hear that, they think something's going to happen and, you know, get to it. But, you know, we're prepared, but we're not anywhere near anything that we feel that's going to be a shutdown of any one school at this time. And, and that's correct. We have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. we, it's not just that simple Chromebook. It's transportation. It's food service. Um, there's lots of different, you know, um, tentacles to closing a school district down and going virtual. And we need to make sure, and, it, it, and we obviously need to refresh for students who have been in school, thank goodness, this whole year, um, you know, for what would their login be if they're in elementary school? How do I get back into Schoology? And so we want to make sure we're prepared that if we have to turn on a dime, that we're ready to. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't prepared to turn on a dime when we first started the pandemic. Right. And, and ultimately, that resulted in greater gaps for students. If we are able to be prepared, then we can turn on a dime and students are ready to engage in learning. And we can almost not skip a beat. Um, and, and ebb and flow between that face-to-face -face and virtual. So, you know, if a school does have to go for numbers um, related to COVID um, or specific something else, as I said, strep throat or something, um, that we would be ready to continue that instruction for, for two weeks virtually and then move right back in. So that ebb and flow is something that we need to be prepared for, even if we never use it. And I hope well, we don't we have know. to. It's insurance. It's insurance. Okay. Any other board members have any questions? No, no. thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, policy. Procurement policy 310. Jane, or Towers. Good evening, Dr. Salins, President Smith, board members. Tonight we bring before you for information and review. This is the first read of an update of procurement policy 310 for goods and services procurement. And looking at this update on page one, it's just the title up top, um, strike out public schools. It would read the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County. And then on page three, under section four, item number C, the, solic the solicitation threshold that prompts a formal procurement shall be 25,000 per vendor invoice. I think we discussed this in a previous meeting that, you know, we, we do have multiple times like a patch job or a curb <coughs> job might be 5,000 at one school, five at another, and that stuff has to get done. Even I think our um, uh, phone systems and stuff sometimes can, you know, and one or two can go down with the age of the system. So that's the reason of this. It's not really changing anything. It's just how they're, we're looking at it to make sure we're in compliance with our audit and everything. Correct. It's a, it becomes um, a little more complicated to track, especially if different departments order using the same vendors because um, you have to add those two together and combine it to the 25000 where if it's 25000 per invoice, you pretty much know where you are as far as the threshold. And so we're not changing the 25. The 25 is still there. If we're going to bid something out for 25, it's going to be the same process as before with the board. It's just things below that will not be compounded at different times. Yes, and then also think about, too, when you bring it to the board for approval, it's, well, I'm not sure what I'm bringing because it's this added to this, added to this, added to that. It, it, it tends to, to get... Um, Convoluted. Yes. Okay. So let me understand this. If you have one vendor who is different departments are asking something from that vendor, you're going to do each individual invoice separately, or are you going to... It's, it, if it's ordered at different times of the year, then payment will go out separate. If it's due around the same time, um, the payment as far, far, as far as the check will go out at the same time. But the invoice is generally per the order. So it would be for one department and then for the other department. But if one school went over 25, at the invoice would be over 25, but it would kick in for our 25,000. Correct, for a single invoice, correct. Any other questions? No, thank you. Thank you. The next item we bring before you is our single audit for FY21. As you know, the single audit is performed every year. It's part of our compliance. The auditor's report has been issued, it's in front of you. So um, for FY21, they tested the um, COVID relief funds, the educational st stabilization funds, and then the child nutrition cluster. And in their opinion, the schedule of expenditures of awards were fairly stated. No findings or questionable costs. Nice. Very nice. 21.
any questions on? Yeah, just a, not a, on page six, the second to last paragraph, the last sentence. We did not identify any deficiencies in internal control over compliance that we consider to be uh, material weakness. However, material weakness may exist that has not been identified. Just explain that to me. Right. It, it's, it's part of their... Um, Cover their self. Yes. <laughs> the disclosure requirements that they have to disclose in case they were ha to happen to have missed something. So they're basically do this audit and then put a disclaimer in that, it might, that they could have missed something. I mean, I'm sure it's the way the accountants work, but it just kind of me seems a little, you know, you ask them to do a job and then they sit there. And, is that what every, it's, it, I'm certainly not picking on this group, but is that just normal counting people that it offer is, themselves that way? It is a required disclosure that they state that in okay. their report. Well, they just picked three sections to audit, is that correct? And so they're- Right, they, they, they rotate out. Correct. Okay. Do you know what they're do? Are you given the information ahead of time of which? No, okay. I am not. No, I'm not. It, it's generally the, the, the larger ones. Um, so the COVID relief funds were a lot of money for this year. Mm -hmm. Then it can be the special ed cluster one year. It could be Title I. It, it will vary. We, we don't know until at the time when they come and audit which ones that they're looking for. And we bid this out each year? Mm -hmm. It actually was bid out a couple of years ago for a five, four or five year contract. So then when, he, when the four or five year contract comes up, then we'd we look, we visit it or something. Um, yes. Okay. Jane, kind of on topic, but a little bit, I know we t briefly touched on it um, outside the meeting when we were talking about Esther stuff, but uh, uh, actually during the meeting, sorry. But do you know if all the, because it was changed where we could no longer use these shields, remember you were gonna see if we can return all those shields and change that money get get the money back since it was not um, our I believe that's then. done through facilities the re actual return on that and I think they're still working on that okay. because it, it's um, the process of even getting the items let alone returning them so I, I think they're still in the works on that but I de would defer that to Mr. Henry. I'd have to take a look at it. Okay. You're talking about the face shields? Yes okay. just because it got changed you know that we sure yeah purchased them and then we're not able to use them. And that was because the state mm -hmm. told us they didn't qualify. Right. So we'll look into that definitely. Thanks. Of course. Okay. Any further questions by the board? Thank, Thank you, Ms. Towers. Thank you, Ms. Thanks. Budget survey results. Good evening, President Smith, board members, executive team. My name is Lynette Powerwaters. I'm the communications specialist, and I'm here to uh, present to you the um, results from the budget survey. Um, we presented the fiscal year budget survey. Um, we emailed it to staff, parents, community members on January 6th. We also placed it on our website and our Facebook page. Participants were given the opportunity to submit their responses until January 17th, and we received 621 responses. Um, please keep in mind the participants were able to leave answers blank if they did not feel it pertained to them or their families, so there weren't 620 responses for every single question. Um, there's a lot of data here, but I will try and run through it quickly, and please stop me if you have any questions. Um, the first question was, are you a parent, employee, or community member? They were able to answer multiple times on this. So we had 96% of the participants were parents or caregivers, 17% employees, and 10% community members. So although that doesn't add up to 100, it could be an employee as well as a parent that answered. When you say employee, I guess you were going out by what email they used? If they used no, it. we asked them specifically okay. in the question, Okay. are they a parent, are they an employee? Gotcha. Yes. Um, we also asked how many children were living in your household. 42% um, had two children or more, 40% had one children or more. As you can see, 620 total responses. 98% of the respondents had at least one child in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So that's a very good indicator. 
Um, the first question was um, high levels of achievement, graduating the budget priorities, excuse me. We asked them what, their, what they felt the priority was for our budget. The first question was high levels of achievement, graduating college and career ready students. Um, 473 responses said that yes, that was number one, very important. And you can see the graph as, it, as we go down. Um, number two, the question was competitive salaries to attract and maintain high quality teachers and staff. Uh, I know this is something HR is very uh, near and dear to their heart and uh, we wanna make sure that we maintain these high quality teachers and staff. 444 participants said yes, that was number one, very important. Small class sizes, low student to teacher ratios. 382, 382 participants said very important. Classroom technology, 271 said very important. Textbooks and materials of instruction, 268. After school programs for remediation and or enrichment, 158 participants said very important. And 174 close seconds said it was second on their list of priorities. Renovation of rebuilding aging facilities. Um, the number one res response was um, number two, 204 respondents said it was important to them. Safety and PPE supplies, COVID supplies, 234 part uh, participants said it was very important, number one. So to summarize that, um, 473 participants said the number one most important thing for budget to them was high le levels of achievement, graduating college and career ready students. 445 said competitive salaries and 383 said small class sizes. And you can go, if you keep reading down, you'll go down the list and see um, the other priorities. We also asked, does Queen Anne's County Public Schools provide adequate career and technology education? Uh, 537 people responded and 70.4% said yes. Um, do we provide adequate uh, additional advanced coursework? 528 responses, 79.5% said yes. Do you feel your child is educated in a safe and secure learning environment? 605 respondents and 88.4% said yes. This graph is a little bit more difficult to understand, but it's rating the quality of the following items related to supporting services. So the graph underneath at the bottom um, of this slide, I just broke down what the um, colored graph above said. So um, as far as rating um, excellent for school bus, 192. 184 above average, 188, 18, and 10, as you can see. What I'm gonna do is just reiterate what each item is, and then the um, average or above average percentage is at the bottom. So school bus is 95%, um, we were average or above. Breakfast, 94% average or above. Lunch, 93%. Guidance and counseling, 89%, and health, 95%. I did the same thing with the other data that we um, requested, uh, rating the following items and school facilities and grounds. Cleanliness of schools, uh, we were 91% average or above. Safe orderly environment, 92% or above. Classroom space availability, 88%. State of repair, maintenance, 85%. Overall appearance, 91%. Classroom furniture, 87%. Parking areas, driveway, driveways, sidewalks, 87. School grounds, 95. And playground areas, 93. Uh, rating uh, number one for the lowest and high, uh, five for the highest. Please rate your customer service satisfaction when interacting with staff. 612 responses. And we were 96.4% average or above for customer service. That's amazing. That's really great. Um, Rate your internet accessibility at your home. This was a question that we were asked to add at the end of the survey. Um, it wasn't initially there, but it is very prudent and um, very um, important for our county because there are so many diverse neighborhoods and we're so spread out. Um, there were 28% of the respondents, there were 620 responses for this, so just about everybody responded. 28% with little to no internet. That means 4% no internet, 6.5 little, and 17.5 some internet. 30% said average, and 42% said they had good internet. 
so to, in conclusion, with all this data that we did collect, um, budget priorities seem to include high levels of achievement, graduate, and college and career ready students, competitive salaries, small class sizes. Um, improving our career and technology programs, 30% of the respondents felt that we were not adequate. So that's something I know that um, Adam Tolley is working uh, diligently on. Um, increase our advanced coursework, 21% felt we needed to improve. 89% of respondents felt their child is educated in a safe and secure environment. And we know that's one of um, our most important um, uh, things to follow. So we really want to make sure everyone feels safe and secure. Um, increase our guidance and counseling services. 11% felt we needed work. Improve our building and maintenance as well as our parking walkways and driveways and our classroom space availability. Customer service was 96% above our average. Work with families that have average, below average internet capabilities, which is 28% of the families. Like I said, I know that was a lot of data, but <laughs> was there anything, any other specific questions or anything I could answer for you? Well, I just had a quick question about the breakfast because everybody could get it, correct? Yes. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. could get it and the lunch. So it's interesting that um, the average was kind of like the biggest number. Did, I mean, was this, do you think that people thought it's like, was it the quality of the breakfast or was it just the, you know, or was it the quality of administration? Like, what do you think? Because I thought, I thought we did an amazing job, Sodexo's done an amazing job with getting these meals out like they did during all this. So it's interesting. Um, we didn't ask numbers. any specific questions. Uh, Dr. Salins, would you like to elaborate on that? Or maybe we can ask Yeah, Sodexo? I mean, we didn't. I mean, one can assume that that's the way you can interpret it. So yeah. I think pe maybe people interpret it in different ways, but that is one way that you could interpret that data. I mean, maybe potentially next year, we could modify the question to be a little bit sure. more specific so that we don't mislead one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah, I just think Sodex was just, I mean, they've just, I they've think they've done an amazing done job. Absolutely. Above and beyond, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I know those ladies were out there, rain, snow, sleet, mm -hmm. any, any time out there outside making sure everyone had food. It's amazing. Anybody else? Well, the, I mean, the conclusion, I think we all know it when you say the budget priorities, uh, competitive salaries and small classes end up to big bucks. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's people. Mm -hmm. That's 85% of our budget. Absolutely. So when we look at those two things, and it's, that's nothing new. I mean, we need smaller classes, competitive salaries, so we can all agree on that. But that's where majority of our go money goes every year. Mm -hmm. uh, Investing in our people is yeah, huge. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it. And the other thing, number five, and I heard this is the budget round thing, increase our guidance and counseling services. I mean, I think that's something we really need to look yes. at because they need to know the path they're going on. But I think that when you start talking counseling services, mental health, I think, is a major issue in this county. And I'm not going to blame it on COVID because it's, it, it's, it's not helped anything. But it's just something that's going to, I think, snowball on us. That I think the social and emotional well-being of all of our staff and students has been a huge priority. And I think that has been addressed. Dr. Salins, if you'd like to elaborate. Yes, well, we've used ESSER funds to add additional positions as it relates to social workers. Mm -hmm. um, and as Mr. Smith alluded to during the budget process, um, that was one of the top three priorities was to add additional guidance counselors, especially at the middle school level. So um, that's that's what our budget priorities will be as we work through the budget process. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we need to know what's been, and, and students need to know, because sometimes they don't know, you know? I mean, you know, sometimes they know what they're gonna be doing, sometimes they don't even through high school, you know? And I think, exactly. I think as, as good assistance we got, we gotta sit there and match to fit for people. Right, and, and we do uh, use Naviance, which is a really good tool. And I tool. think when we met with the yeah. commissioners one time, they mentioned what they could do, you know, this counseling services, the social, and I mean, that that's a priority. I mean, it, it everybody is. comes to our school system, but they need to sit there and really understand there's some issues around. Yeah. That uh, if we catch them, are we going to catch them now or catch them later? Yep. Yeah, I it's think it's everywhere. It's not just, proactive. yeah, it's just the, where we live now, you know, this day and age. Yeah, and, you know, I hate to say it, with social media, it's going to get not good. <laughs> There's a lot of I good have a things, teenager, but. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions by the board? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Salins, you got the... Yes, President Smith, members, members of the board. Um, I bring to you an informational item of the hourly changes to increase the hourly scale. 
um, typically this time of year in January, um, uh, <coughs> mandates come out. And uh, obviously with minimum wage, we know that that's been a hot topic in legislation and we know that we have, that we're working towards that $15 an hour minimum wage. This year in January, that um, minimum wage hourly rate went to $12.50. So we started to adjust the scale. Um, and then as we brought in um, Dr. Noel and, and really started to look at um, where are we having the most challenging um, places in the district to fill positions and it really is some of the employees that are on our hourly scale. Um, as you can see here, some that includes um, some of our, our, our substitutes, um, some of our custodians, um, our home hospital teachers, and, and those are the folks that this mostly impacts. And so what we decided to do was go ahead and instead of waiting till next year and the following year to finally get to that $15 threshold, we decided to do that now. Um, the budget impact um, is, is, is does not impact the budget this year, I should say, because of additional fundings that we've had in other categories such as substitutes Institutes that we have not used, as well as ESSER funds to pick up some of this. Um, so it's not going to impact the budget and therefore the, the board really doesn't have to vote on that because it's not changing, modifying, or um, our current operating budget. Um, but it, it's really an important thing for us to do. Um, earlier in the school year, we were having some concerns with substitute nurses. So we were able to modify just that line item and some of our extended long-term substitute nurses. So. Um, this that that portion was already done. We just kind of came back around and really cleaned up the rest of it. I will bring out a couple of things. Um, in the green, you'll see that this is our PFY. This is actually set on a different schedule through that grant. I don't know that that's the best way to do things. I think we can continue to work with uh, Ms. King, the coordinator there, to try to see if we can get some better alignment as we move into the following school year. Um, but for right now, we weren't going to, to ta kind of tackle that. They were all, as you can see, above that threshold that we had set. Um, so that really gives you some explanation to the yellows that had already been changed earlier in the fall to the green area, which again, as I said, is a, is a separate grant um, partnering for youth um, that Mrs. King, the coordinator um, runs and mostly as you can see the staffing that impacts you know, her budget there. Um, so I'll, if the board has any questions about the changes. It won't affect this year's budget, but it will Correct. affect next year's budget because you know these these rates will stay in place that's correct and also want to make sure that we consider our employees because at fifteen dollars you're talking thirty one thousand dollars a year correct rough thirty two to two um the county has a living wage i think that's higher than that thirty three believe 30, just over thirty three thousand and yes, um i just think we need to really keep an eye on it because i think uh, we have a lot of people that support our system that uh have, have uh, you know, need to have a living wage. And I, and I agree, and that, that is actually, um, falls more under the negotiation realm. So Understood. I don't, I don't have the liberty um, to, to, to change, to change that. Mm -hmm. um, this, because it's an hourly scale, I, I have the ability and my authority to change that. Um, but certainly I think that we all know that that's of concern of ours that, um, you know, of the people who have, um, you know, that are on our regular scale for um, the support services one, two, and three, and really looking at those that are in the beginning of that scale and what that looks like. Certainly as we move through negotiations, um, that would be something that, that as a district, we, we all need to, keep to talk about and keep in mind. Okay. The board have any other questions? No, I just, I think it's just a, a great direction to go in oh, for thank these you. people are so very important to us um, and, and, and our goal to um, keep things safe and clean. And so that's really great. But I did have, and I'm sorry that I didn't ask this early. I did notice that the Title I tutor is not on the the um, the updated. Is that one staying the same? The Title One Tutor was sixteen sixty five. Is that staying the same? No, it was um, collapsed into Tutor, so it's okay. not broken out. Okay, it just seemed kind of redundant to, to have it down below. No, I understand that. And then. Um, and I should have asked this one too, the retired QAC to secretary. So she's retired, I shouldn't say she, sorry, any um, secretary, no matter whom. Yes. Um, it's going to the 2130, but a regular secretary, is that the same job, whether you're a secretary substitute or the secretary, so they would make the 15, but the secretary substitute would make 2130? Is that correct? 
I only see the one on here, so I'm confused. Um, I'm Honestly. sorry. It's I, see the I, I see the retired QAC secretary. I see a retired QAC substitute teacher. Yeah, so the QAC, the, re the retired QAC secretary. So is that this would be if they substituted as a secretary after yes. they retired, so they yes. would make 2130, but our regular secretary makes 15? Where do you that, see regular? That's down there in the hourly. Um, uh, yeah. Second to the last. Oh, secretary of receptionist. That's correct because the, I, you know they likely have given us several years, and when they okay. left us, had a different pay scale at that time. Okay. So that's how it's calculated. Um, the exact percentage, I don't know, and I don't know that Jane knows off her head. But um, but it's coming from where this years of service that they've okay. already provided to the district. The retired would uh, would come in with more Thanks. knowledge. Right? Yes, the they more, come in with more, more yeah and experience. That thing. Mm -hmm. okay. This would be someone who's just starting here. That fifteen dollars an hour. And that's and that's okay. just Thank an hourly you. rate, no no benefits. That's so, an hourly rate, so no benefits. So this in. isn't. Exactly. So, so when you look at the other one, it's probably, well, it is. Yeah. But that's something we need to address everywhere. Yeah. That was a good question, though. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any no, other I'm, questions? I'm, yes. No. It's great. Yes, I do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to reiterate that we are still within the budget. There's no e extra money going out to cover these increases. Correct. Right. Uh, We're going to absorb it in for right. this year's it's budget. It's being absorbed by what's... We, we don't have people in substitute positions, and we have many people, you know, not in our system right. at the moment. Right. And, and really, we have the three years, and so we've articulated out during that three-year span of how we can increase that line item slightly each year to ensure that we can cover that. Because um, it, it's not an exorbitant amount of money, but it still is something that we need to make sure that we follow over the next three years so that when we get to the end of that, um, that we are well prepared to um, have that in the operating budget. So we get three years to kind of loosen our belt a little bit in that line item. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Towers, you're up again. Oh, thank you. Good evening again. We bring before you tonight a transfer request for our unrestricted budget. This is for FY22. We have um, two things that we need to uh, take a look at. The first is the additional fixed charges for the December bonus. That was $80,919, and that was to come from fund balance. The other items here we have on this budget transfer request is mid-level administration. Administration salaries to, um, to cover for mid-level salaries. And this is basically, we had leave payouts under the mid-level administration category, category number two. We had to um, increase the budget for the school secretaries and then to cover support for mid-level um, positions. So we'd like to transfer funds from tutoring savings to the mid-level. And then the next one, transportation, we're looking to increase salaries for, sub or not set increase salaries, but put a budget line item for your um, substitute bus drivers and your bus attendants. There's no, currently no line item in the budget for those two categories. So that again would come from your savings from tutoring funds because we're utilizing restricted funds for that for this year. And then um, we have some savings and fixed charges. How does that affect um, students needing tutoring if we're using those funds? It, it won't affect the, the tutoring at all. Um, we're utilizing restricted funds instead of unrestricted funds. Gotcha. So SR grant monies mm -hmm. for the tutoring. Gotcha. We had gotcha. about $700,000 um, okay. to spend on the tutoring, which we've been using during the school year and actually in the summertime last summer as well. So um, that's been going very well. So knowing that we already had that in our budget okay. gives us you know, opportunity to say, we're not gonna be able to spend that because we're using SR funds to really spend that. And then just an item of note too, the 125,000 for transportation salaries, we'll definitely have to work that into the budget for next exactly. year. Yeah, there's no line item in there at all. For it wasn't one there for last year, it wasn't? No, I look back uh, two years and there was an initial one. There was actually budget amendments to get it put in and during the year. But never but put the in the initial to start, the, the I have, did not see any, no. And also I wanna note that when it says uh, this 80,919, uh, from the fund balance is a one-time cost because that was a one-time mm -hmm. uh, 
we, we gave our teachers, our, I'm sorry, our employees, which was mainly funded f through the county commissioners. Right. This is just excess that uh, we are putting up, um, but that the county did the, the rest of it, but this is a one-time cost, it's not a reoccurring, so it's coming out of the fund balance at a one-time thing. Yes, yes, that is correct. Okay. So since there, it's all salaries, I mean, we're doing instructional salaries to mid-level salaries, instructional salary to fringe costs to transportation salaries. There's not a problem. We have to send a letter over to the commissioner's desk for yes, this anyway? Yes, we do. Yes, because we're, we're moving within different categories. So yes, we okay. do. Okay, that's what, that's what I was wondering, different categories. Um, Mr. Smith, may I please make a motion? Well, uh, is there any further comments? Sorry, I apologize. Members? No, that's okay. Nope. That's okay, fine. go ahead. Bye. I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, I make a motion uh, for the approval of the transfer request with budget amendment number four for FY 2022. Um, major category mid level administration, instructional salaries and wages to mid level salaries 135,000. Major category transportation, instructional salaries and fringe costs to transportation salaries 125,000. Budget source unrestricted funds. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we now have to make a motion to send over the letter to Mr. Smith? The letter is attached as well. The letter is attached. Uh, I make a motion to send the letter over to the county commissioners regarding the earlier motion. Second. I have the letter in front of me that's been signed by the Dr. Salins, and we will send that over along with this. All no. those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. Any other board members have any? Thing for the calls. Thank you. Future meetings. Our next regular meeting will be February the 2nd. We will have a budget meeting on the 9th and a workshop on the 16th of next month. So we're only two in February doing three meetings. Oh, sorry. Okay. The second, second. second is our regular meeting. The 9th is our budget and the 16th is our, our, our scheduled our work, session. work session. Okay. So the extra meeting in February will be the budget on the 19th, the, the second. Ninth. On the 9th. The 9th, yes. And that will be at what time? Five, probably? 4.30? I have 4.30. 4.30. Is everybody good on that? 4.30 for the 9th? Yes. Yes. And other regular meetings stay the same. Okay. Do I have no, for the calls? I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in here say aye. 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 Thank you. We'll see you next time. Smoking, Mr. Smith.